I wanted to uh, talk about a couple of uh, ways that you can add 3D in uh, Dog Waffle, or rather, uh, show you a couple of places where Project Dog Waffle and in particular PD Howler has now some 3D capabilities. Uh, there are a couple of places and some of them came over the last one or two uh, years and just recently also the GPU accelerated version of the Ray Tracer with Puppy Ray. So um, let's start with uh, something like this image or let's say we have perhaps uh, an image like this one. Let's go take a look at that, view just the image and let's say we copy that and we want to put that into our brush, for instance, here. All right, so from the clipboard, paste it from the clipboard. So now it's in the brush. Now you don't have the brush visible enabled by default, but you can preview it. If you have the brush tool selected, you can click on PRV, and then that will show you the brush. Now, in this case, even though that came originally from a PNG file with transparency, when you copy it through the clipboard, it doesn't get that transparency mask. So we might need to uh, to right click here on the brush selector tool and see if we can key to the background here, select the color uh, of the background here to make that transparent. Uh, you can adjust a little bit how, how flexible you want or how strict you want to be on that transparency mask. It's a color keying that it's doing right there. All right, so now at this point, we do have that transparency. We still want to make sure it is fully opaque wherever it's not transparent. And there you go. So we have a nice little uh, circular logo. Let's go store this uh, temporarily as a brush that we can use later on. Perhaps also store it as an image. Store, that's not the brush menu, store as image. And then that way we could do a couple of things such as uh, clicking it to bring it back in here or selecting other options such as uh, pasting it with scale to fit so it goes into the entire canvas, scales it up. So let's say we want to do some 3D uh, appearance or give this image some 3D um, appearance. One, one place to start is with the transform filters. Uh, let me go and disable the preview of the brush and take a look at this first one here under the transform way down at the bottom there's a 3D perspective capability. And that one is one that already uses a little bit of 3D um, and can be useful for perhaps some animated um, transitions or titles uh, something like this let's go and animate this let's create an animation from this image and perhaps we want that to be 100 frames let's say 90 uh, 90 frames which will make it exactly three seconds long uh, if we play it at 30 frames a second so let's go to FPS here and make sure it's playing at 30 frames a second now right now no animation is visible but we can go to this um, animate to the uh, transform and 3D perspective and apply some uh, transform. However, this would apply the same transform over the entire image sequence. So you wouldn't see this animation and it'd be nice if we could actually apply some sort of an animation like this. That you can do with the timeline. The timeline editor allows you to keyframe the parameters of some of these filters. So the same filters we have, most of them here, there's a 3D perspective indeed and uh, the parameters may be switched but you can still figure out which one is which this one here rotates along the x-axis kind of a vertical move and this one is sideways around the vertical axis so let's say you wanted to have the penguins go from left to right and also the camera kind of follow it so uh, we might we might settle it here and start around here and then end this way so let's go here and keyframe that there you go and then go all the way to the end and bring it to the other side but also bring the camera looking into the other direction something like this and keyframe that so now we have a transition let's make it a linear transition and we can go and apply that and so what you can see now is that we are having the transform applied on each frame but it is with different angles and different positions and it's making for a nice sequence of uh, animated frames. So let's go and uh, we're done with that, I think. Or maybe it's still rendering. No, I think it's done. So let's go and play it. There you go. 
So that's one first level where we have some 3D capabilities. Let's have a look at some others. Let's go and put uh, let's put the text back in we had earlier. Let's go and uh, let's see. We want to erase to white. There you go. And the text tool. Now with the text tool, you might see it very small initially. Right? It won't be that big. And you can go to the F here for the font lister or font selector and the uh, default might be very small in fact it probably won't be this font it will be something like Arial or system it will be very small but uh, what you can do is you can center it you can center it sideways on the right on the center and you can select a different font and I don't remember which font I had earlier here it looked like a really big one I liked it um, but we could go certainly change the size now and let's say this one okay so this is good let's go select this font and position this somewhere maybe we can take the corner of that box and scale it down a little bit something like so and place it roughly in the middle we can uh, center it here center height uh, horizontal center vertical and that will be good enough here let's go and apply it so apply the text right there and so as you see we we uh, we have now this text in there and we can there of course apply the same transform if you uh, look at uh, this one here uh, perspective distortion right same thing so you can imagine doing some transforms on that text as well now you can also use this to turn this into a 3d landscape in a couple of other ways one quick way is to apply some lighting on it so if you go with the uh, filter stylize and apply the lighting tool um, you'll see that you can place the light source around here perhaps bring it uh, br make it brighter or bring it closer to the surface or farther away and still brighter find a nice balance here but uh, what happens is that you will see sort of a lighting effect that it's doing and you can change the amount of uh, extrusion there's a texture height here that's basically an elevation map coming from that uh, and you can change the smoothness of it look at that that's a nice little effect here uh, you can go and give it like an embossed look that way um, you can give it the original color this one's uh, black and white so it's not going to make a whole lot of a difference there but let's say we also want to change the color of the light so we can uh, click here on the light color and perhaps give it more of a pinkish appearance there you go and bring it on the left to the left like so and then add another you can add another light and this one would perhaps go over here and it would be a little bit farther but brighter and kind of a bluish tint it already gets this by default but we can make it so even more and um, one thing you'll notice here now we have um, sort of a very different appearance of that it's more of a 3d look with the, the lighting effects uh, it's actually got the two lights uh, on separate uh, layers and you can merge them or you can disable one and you can disable the other so there is a, a variety of uh, post uh, adjustments you can do here let's go and delete this or we can blend them together do a single layer uh, let's go and uh, start from scratch again let's erase and bring that text again in there well let's go and undo until we get back to that text and i'm going to store this image because we might like to use that again store this image copy there you go so uh, some other 3d transforms that we can apply um, there is definitely uh, there are two to talk about in the transform category one is the 3d designer there's also a, uh, a wireframe somewhere there but uh, or isometric 3d but that one's kind of a legacy tool we'll skip that but the 3d designer came uh, really strong in version 8 with a gpu version in 8.2 and then the puppy ray of course the ray trace uh, the ray tracing engine uh, also there so let's start a look uh, let's have a look first at the 3d designer and with the 3d designer um, you'll, you'll immediately see that yeah this is definitely 3d you can uh, move it into um, different you can look at it from different angles you can uh, you can look at it from the bottom side uh, you can look at it from the top uh, come in a little bit closer 
Um, let's see, I uh, have the extrusion changed. Where's the heading? Uh, there's probably some places here. There you go. You can move the, the camera out the position of the scene. Come a little bit closer to it, right? And um, and then also change the lighting. So there's two now. This one has two light sources, and uh, you can you can give them different colors, and you can do all sorts of different things to that. So that could be also a really interesting way to to do all sorts of uh, 3D titles, um, or perhaps uh, you know some labels of some sorts. Let's say we want to have it disappear not to black. Uh, we can change the fog. There's a fog level we can change. So there's a fog level, but then there is the background color that sets the fog also. So let's go to a reddish, for instance, and it disappears to red. Um, you can set the ground floor, uh, the, the fog to be linear, or you can have it uh, all sorts of different uh, effects here too, like transitions that go very suddenly or just gradually. Um, there's a, a ground fog also. Um, so that one, if it's off, that's actually better seen with terrain. We'll perhaps look at that. There's lots of tutorials on this, by the way. If you go back to the YouTube channel, you'll see many, many, many tutorials on that. So there's also some, uh, some pre-filter on that. You can make it a little bit softer or very sharp edges. If you reduce the pre-filter here down to zero, it's very sharp corners. Uh, the pre-filter increasing that and perhaps adding the anti-aliasing a little bit, this will make for very nice renders. So. There's that. Uh, that one can also be animated, uh, so it can apply that uh, across the entire image sequence. Uh, or you can use it through the timeline with the transform as well. In fact, let's do that. Let's go and create an animation of this one. Um, something like, uh, again, 90 frames. And this time I'm actually going to invert the image. So invert it, and then uh, now we have the white text against the black background, and I'm going to make it also apply that against the entire animation. Uh, on top of that, I'm going to do some, some um, light diffusion, but I don't want that just on the current image, so I'm going to go to the timeline and have the light diffusion that's on the photographic group. There it is, a photographic group of filters apply that so that it's going to uh, let's see apply that to light diffusion so we we have a little bit of a soft white edge around it it's not all sharp black to white um, it's going to be subtle but it might add a little bit of a, a leveling or a, a, gra a gradient to the slope there uh, as we are turning this into a 3d elevation map uh, i think we're doing that i hope we're doing that pro properly uh, no, you know what? It did not seem to take it. I must have... maybe my alpha channel is off. I don't know. doesn't matter. We can work with this. Oh, no, actually we did have it. It's just very subtle. It's very, very faint. Very little bit of, of, uh, of a light gradient. I don't know if you can tell here in the video. We got a little bit of a light gray or dark gray here around it. Alright, so what I'd like to do is take this. Let's again store this image in case we need this. Further down the road. And this time I'm going to, okay, uh, show it at 100%. Uh, this time I'm going to use the timeline and the 3D transform filter, so the 3D designer, just the same way that we had, but this time across the entire animation, which means we can keyframe some of the parameters. Uh, there is still the wireframe designer, by the way, that was one of the very first uh, filters that had a bit of a 3D look, and that sometimes can make a nice little techno sci-fi uh, 3D text, but uh, let's go with the 3D designer and uh, what this one does is uh, bring you that same text uh, or 3D designer tool we had a little bit earlier, um, but this time um, we can also, let's say, uh, have the extrusion amplitude changed a little bit. Uh, perhaps we can, uh, let's see, there you go. Perhaps we can have the fog catch up here. So the fog level makes it disappear like this. Uh, perhaps we can have the, the ground fog, let's see, linear. There you go. And you notice, by the way, while you're changing parameters, it goes to a lower resolution. It's kind of blocky appearing. And then it goes back to the higher resolution, which you can set right here. This is the maximum number of steps. And this is the sample steps at the maximum. Uh, you can change the uh, pre-filter here. 
as we saw earlier to keep a flat or sharp crisp look or you can have it uh, increase or decrease a little bit uh, you can also increase the specularity how much specular lighting you get and the roughness of that specular so it gives you a bit more of a metallic look uh, hardness reduce brightness increase um, let's see what else all right, so let's say we want uh, this kind of text, but we now want to have a little bit of a change, an animated change on the um, on the appearance, so the angle. So when you click OK, it's now still in the uh, 3D designer, and you can now, uh, inside the timeline that is, you can now set those six parameters. Uh, you can either do it directly here in the preview, and or you can do that right here if you know which angle controls what so let's say for instance we want to oops uh, that one changes the position so let's say we want to do a little bit of a zoom going from here from here in the back all the way to here but as we do that we also want to change the angle right so let's say for instance we start with something like this and it's a very it's very far in the back in the disappearing in the fog right so like this and we are on the first frame the first frame of uh, 90 frames and we will set it to the first one and keyframe that there you go now we can go forward we can go let's say uh, about a third into the animation and change the distance there you go and then also change the angle and rotate it like so right and perhaps move it down a little bit there's the y position so it's not being clipped at the top something like that uh, so keyframe that now we can go and just rotate it slightly to the other side and elevate up like so and perhaps bring it back a little bit so it goes like this and keyframe that and now at the very end it kind of flies through us so we have the angle go like this all the way into us and perhaps still no we could still change the angle a little bit but uh, no let's just leave, leave it like that and keyframe this so now we have a couple of uh, keyframes right uh, a little bit of an animation where it's coming from the background this one's an orange background but you could have this in white or in black or whatever color you want and uh, you have this little transition going um, and uh, you could change this by the way so that it's taking longer to do this and then it's uh, perhaps uh, uh, this angle here this keyframe could come closer to the end so it's doing a very sudden move into the camera all right all right so let's do this and let's render that again you have the undo here keep it say uh, keep keep it uh, saving the undos just in case you decide that's not good enough and you want to redo that you can do one undo level on the animation sequence so here's an example of some 3d titles that are animated and that we just rendered in in a very quick and quick and easy way not not the very highest quality not the very best looking fonts uh, this is kind of a low resolution now we can go further and use puppy ray so that talks of, now let's talk about the uh, the 3d that's uh, a little bit more sophisticated with the ray tracing but it's also tiling it because it was really meant for tiling or repeating the text uh, for instance if we if we have this one here and I'm going to um, repeat it again replace uh, scaling it rather here uh, they are scaled to fit and then I'm going to make an animation of that and let's say this one we want 60 frames as well and we want the frames per second still to be 30 frames a second let's keep that in mind all right so now we have the other way to do a 3d transform on that and that's in the puppy ray now I, I want you to understand that what you see here is color but that's not actually going to be colorizing the the scene uh, we need to have that color set in a different place and that's the uh, the swap buffer if we just keep it like this what you'll see is that it's going to be the elevation map and uh, for instance with the GPU version you can quickly navigate through that you can look at it uh, from a little bit further up with the right button inside this preview or left and right button lets you navigate around it looks also like it's inverted or rotated no it's actually inverted uh, let's change the fog so you can see how far it's tiling it let's go change the light source make it move up a little bit or increase or uh, add some lighting from the environment the uh, sky dome 
and so this sky here it, which we can change skies you can change to the reddish look for instance for the sunset that one has a sun somewhere here too there it is um, <clears throat> but there is uh, definitely uh, something that's happening to that elevation map it's currently inverted so it's a different coordinate system and uh, that's okay we uh, we can probably still you know enjoy this or, or work with that in fact if we really need this not to be inverted what we can do is we just flip the image vertically and and then we will have it just fine uh, in fact let's do that let's go back to the original image and flip it vertically image right there flip vertical just this one image at this time I'm not going to apply that to the entire animation yet and I want to see uh, transform puppy ray there it is so now we have it flipped and therefore the rendering is going to be just fine here if I turn it into a little bit slower uh, faster but uh, lesser quality I can see it right there uh, let's say I want to zoom back a little bit yep there it is so that one's no longer inverted but it doesn't have the colors it's just using that image as an elevation map that's what happens when you have it in the main buffer right so the main buffer is defining the elevation map what do you do if you want to actually have those colors as well well what you do is you put them into the swap buffer so you have the elevation map in the main buffer and you have the color map in the swap buffer let's do that so let's undo and here is the image we want that also in the swap buffer let's go image copy to swap image there you go so now we have it in both places in fact if you click here in the upper right corner the, the larger icon it will combine the two multiply mode by default and you can see that they are both there uh, you can also switch here with the little s icon in the upper right corner you can see in the title whether you're looking at the main buffer or the swap um, uh, image you can also do that right there the lowercase j is a shortcut to do that sometimes it goes so fast though that it just it does two of those so uh, it's good to use this icon this uh, shortcut here uh, so now we have the colors and the elevation map right, so what we can do is uh, go back to that filter transform puppy ray and I'm still going to use the GPU version here but now you can tell that it's also using the colors in fact if I'm going to reduce the scale here let's go to a little bit more details and reduce the scale it's flattening it and I end up having no elevation visible even though there is an elevation map it could use but I'm flattening it flattening it you can go and make this go stick out much more or you can flatten it all the way and uh, perhaps increase the brightness of the uh, sky dome uh, perhaps the the light coming from it in fact the the brush image i currently have right in here that one can be used also and that gives a little bit more of a whitish appearance because there is uh, quite a bit of white and a little bit of bluish there um, so the the illumination from that is actually pretty nice um, let's see if we can go and look at this in different ways uh, different angle Let's rotate it like so. Let's change the fog to go even further back. Or maybe, you know what, let's change the fog to go white. That's something we want to see a lot of times in, in websites is to have it disappear to white because the background of the website may be white. So here's how you can do that. And the light source, you can change the intensity of it too. Uh, so that will perhaps uh, kind of uh, blast it out here if you go very high on the brightness or you can reduce the intensity and, and basically have no light source at all uh, or you can have it uh, perhaps have the light source disappear below the you know drag it down so it disappears below the uh, the terrain but how come we still see this well because we have the global illumination enabled if we uncheck that then there is no more lighting happening on it Right? And if you bring the light back up with the right button and also the intensity of it, uh, then you see that you do have one thing that can shine on it, and that's the light source. There's one light source in, um, in, in Puppy Ray at this time. And um, again, if you, if you bring it down too low, it will disappear below, below the, the terrain, the, elevation, uh, the elevated terrain here and uh, so the only way then to actually illuminate it is with the global illumination but that's a really nice way to do it because it's a very uniform lighting coming from all over the entire sky is now contributing to that lighting so you can see here we have the the uh the image of my uh 
with my happy penguin and um, you know whatever image is in the custom brush that's what's showing on the sky so you have three images you can work with inside of a puppy ray you have the image that's controlling the elevation map that's the main buffer then you have the image that's in the swap buffer that turns into the coloring on the terrain and then you have the image in the custom brush and that one turns into the sky dome so let's uh, see one more time if we change the you know the distance for that we can have it go really far away and uh, perhaps do a high quality render let's go final render and there it is all right and uh, of course you could also do that in the non-accelerated non-gpu version let's go to the transform uh, puppy ray cpu and it's doing very similar. It's a slightly smaller interface here in the preview, uh, but you can also find a option to see more. There it is, it's a slightly different layout, um, but uh, you see most of the same options here. Let's say we want this, we want to enable the sky dome, we want to disable the, the light source itself, um, and then uh, bring it a little bit better on the quality. Now in here in the preview, you don't see a very high quality. Uh, it's gonna be on the rendering site that you see at the end. So let's give it uh, a roughly similar appearance here. It's not sharing the data between the GPU and the CPU version. That could be an interesting feature perhaps for a future expansion. Because right now you, you want to, to find those same parameters again. Uh, perhaps move back a little bit, move the fog, there it is, move the fog farther away, change the color of the fog, remember we set it to white, there you go, and uh, let's see, maybe that's too far, we want a little bit of that fog effect, there you go, and uh, let's see, what else could we do, uh, oh yeah, change the angle, like so. Alright, so now the extrusion is probably still there, we want to make it flat, there you go. Oh, we're looking in the wrong direction. So let's go and rotate it a little bit like so. And like so, change it to the upper part. There you go, I think here we're coming a little bit closer. Gotta rotate it this way. There you go. Okay, so now we're going to render that. And let's do first a test render at medium quality and um, ray trace that so now here you use the ray tracer and you can see that happening uh, not quite as fast as when it's accelerated with the gpu but uh, still a great way to to do illustrations like these and uh, if you want to uh, increase the pre-filter or reduce it you have some control of that uh, you can say perhaps if you don't want any interpolation of the colors uh, Anti-aliasing can be disabled, jitter samples, I mean there's all sorts of controls and maybe you don't need the shadows to be traced. And let's render that. Not much different at this point. Let's go and increase the quality to final render and that, that is going to take a long time because you know this is a GPU, a CPU rendering so it's not going to be uh, lightning fast unless you have a lightning fast system and uh, but you can definitely use this now to do your final render so <coughs> i hope this uh, gives you an idea of a couple of places where 3d comes to play inside of project dog waffle there are a few others and some of them are kind of very subtle and uh, there's even a brush that has some 3d particles uh, swirling around the cursor it's it's the, we call that the orbitals orbital brushes are kind of like a uh, a beehive is uh, flying around the honeypot that's attached to the brush and uh, they're leaving their, tra their trails as they're going against the, the canvas. So anyway, thanks for watching this little doodle and uh, dabble of uh, Project Dog Ruffle now with Hilo 9.1 and uh, exploring some of the 3D capabilities that you can have uh, inside of uh, of this new program this new version of the program uh, again this is all uh, kind of flat looking and of course if you really wanted to see this in 3d all you got to do is say yeah let it become a 3d extrusion so now that elevation map that you had here we can make that also uh, with trace shadows uh, jitter sample let's make it all the best quality we have so let's go like this and final render or maybe just for the sake of the demo, maybe not absolutely final, but let's go ray trace that nonetheless. And we can see it really with some 3D like elevation map being used as well.